Hi, I'm Scott from Whiskey and Sunshine. If you're like me, when it starts to get this time of the year, the end of summer, you start thinking about fall. And when I start thinking about fall, I start thinking about whitetail season. Hunting starts to be something on everybody's mind. Something those of us up here in the Northeast really love. It's the time of year we wait for all year long. And to go along with that, I thought today I'd make a video to share some good news with you. Most of you have probably heard the rumors, maybe you've even seen the videos released lately. Uh, Thompson Center Arms looks to be going back into business. Their former president, Greg Ritz, bought out what was left of all of the original stock, all the parts, all the blanks, anything that he could get a hold of that belonged to Thompson Center from Smith & Wesson, and he's moving it, supposedly, all back to Manchester, New Hampshire, where he's going to be the president of the new, recreated, reborn Thompson Center Arms. I think that's great. I really do. Whatever they do with the company, I'm all for it. It's a local company. They make excellent products. I will say that I'm more of a traditionalist and that I like the black powder stuff a lot more than I like their newest stuff. They've come out with some very innovative things lately. Well, in the last few years of them doing business, uh, they came out with their own version of Ruger's 1022. Uh, that was a nice gun. My son-in-law has one of those. I've shot it. It's a really nice gun. They also uh, have done some centerfire stuff with high-powered rifles. They've created uh, a line of rifles now, supposedly, that you're going to be able to change barrels and change chamberings, kind of like you do with the Encore or the uh, Contender. So you'll be able to have one rifle that will shoot several calibers by changing the barrel. Also very innovative and very cool, and it also harkens back to the uh, original design from, uh, oh, I'm trying to think what his name was. Mr. Center, anyway, his last name, Warren Center, Warren, Warren Center was his name. Uh, he originally worked for Harrington Richardson before coming to work and partnering with Thompson. He uh, developed the original design for the Contender, the interchangeable barrel pistol, and later they actually made rifles out of Contenders and Encores, caused a bit of a, uh, a dust up with the ATF. They finally got all that straightened out and they became a very popular firearm. Now in the video that was released recently uh, by Mr. Ritz, he goes through a lot of the old uh, firearms and a lot of the old stuff. And it really, it, it did my heart good to see a lot of the stuff that was uh, in those crates. How much of the old stuff they're gonna do, I don't know. Nothing, nothing would make me happier than to see them bring back stuff like the Scout Rifle. Um, you know, even the Scout Pistol, the Hawkins, the Kentucky Rifles, all that black powder stuff. I just love it. But I have a feeling that's probably not what they're going to do, at least not for the time being. I mean, now they're, a, they're an old company, but really they're a new company, too, because they're starting over. My thoughts would be that they're probably going to lean towards the more innovative stuff that they were working on. And their black powder stuff is going to be more like this Omega. Uh Wonderful, wonderful black powder gun, falling block like a Creedmoor, the breech drops down, you put a shot shell primer in there, a 209 primer, really lends itself well to the uh, pelletized powders that you can get that are very high performance, that with the addition of a, a shotgun primer, you're really, <laughs> you're really getting up there when it comes to performance as far as muzzle loaders go, and I'm telling you, these, these things are great. I love the old ones. They're, you know, they're more traditional. You know, these, of course, it's a great looking gun. They're not old. They only came out in the 80s. And I think, uh, I think they produced the last of them around 96 and 97. Unfortunately, that was when Thompson suffered a, uh, a really bad fire at their factory in Manchester. And they lost the uh, the whole line and whole all the tooling for the scouts. And I think it might have been the Renegade. I, uh, there was another one that they lost. I don't remember which it was. The scouts never came back after that. That's why you don't see many of them around. 
Would I like to see him make them again? Oh yeah, you bet, you bet I would. And I know there's a lot of people out there that would love to have one because they're very hard to find. I just can't see Thompson at this stage of the game going out on a limb to produce something that's got a limited, you know, pool of buyers. There's only so many people that are going to get into the into the whole scout thing. I would figure if it ever comes back, it'll probably be a limited run thing, and they'll probably be very expensive. If they were going to get into the uh, get back into the front stuffer market, I would expect them to go more with these modern ones, like the Omega and the Bone Collector, and uh, it's all different. They have many, many, many. Triumph was another one. Uh, I can't keep up. They're all wonderful, wonderful firearms. Always well made. I have never seen a quality issue with a real Thompson ever. I mean, I don't know about the later stuff that was made in Massachusetts after Smith & Wesson bought them out, but thankfully, Mr. Ritz, who, as I said, was a past president of Thompson Center in the first place, he actually made the transition and went to Springfield, Mass, when Smith & Wesson bought him out. So he's been with the company for a very long time. Somehow, he... Uh, scrounged up the money or the investors to purchase all the rest of the tooling, all the equipment, and all of the old stock. So I'm really looking forward to see what they do. I I, I think uh, whatever they do is going to be wonderful. And I like it because it's, it's local. It's one of the reasons I love them. I mean, it's, 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 an, it's an hour or two's drive away to the factory. Um, I think that's great. That may be why some of these older Thompsons are around this area more than they are the rest of the country, because it was made locally. I don't know. But at one time, Thompson, they were the premier, they were the premier black powder firearm manufacturer in the United States. They really hit the market in 1970. They'd already established their uh, contender pistol line, and they were going crazy with that. Then around 1970, they started making uh, reproductions of the Hawken. For a long time, that didn't do all that well, but eventually this movie came out called Jeremiah Johnson. Everybody got a load of those Hawkins that he carried, and everybody wanted to be a mountain man. So Thompson's business soared. They took off though, them and Connecticut Valley Arms, which is uh, CVA. Of course, also a New England company. Uh, they just they just took off and they went like crazy. Now I'm not belittling a lot of these new companies, uh, you know, that have come out with with muzzleloaders. Knight was a good one. Um, Traditions actually was a good one. They are Italian made. A lot of your uh, black powder stuff now is made in Italy, and so aren't really the uh, the recreations. A lot of the cowboy and the single action stuff. So that that kind of stands to reason. I don't know if Thompson is going to keep up with their recreations or quirky stuff like that. And let's face it, this Scout is quirky. It's not a historical firearm, even though it looks like it is. Uh, it was designed in the 80s and was in production until, I think, 96. So they really weren't made that long. They're cool as hell. If you get a chance to get one, I'd say get one, if you, especially if you can get it cheap, because of the cool factor. I love to shoot it. I love to take it out and shoot it. It's it's great fun, but it lends itself better to loose black powder, a black powder substitute, and it takes a number 11 percussion cap. Uh, I've never had a misfire with this gun, and I've shot it quite a bit. But that being said, there's also a lot going on with these new ones because they're state of the art. The powder is better. Not that you can't use black powder, you can. Uh, you may even be able to get an adapter so you can put percussion caps on it, but there's no sense. Uh, shot shell primers are everywhere. You can, you can get them most anywhere that they sell powder or primers. They'll have shot shell primers. They have special muzzle loader primers now, but they're really just a 209 primer, maybe with a little more kick, you know, a little more snap, like more like a Magnum shot shell primer, if you will. But uh, either way, you know, these new ones, you know, they have fiber optic sights. These are both drilled and tapped for a scope. But, I mean, who's going to want to put a scope on this when you can put a scope on this? And truthfully, 
when the time comes for me to go afield, so to speak, and black powder season comes, and I'm hunting with one and trying to put food on the table, I'm not going to take this for two reasons. One, it's kind of a collector's item, and it's special to me. Two, this is a far superior modern firearm when it comes to this. This is what I would expect Thompson to make as far as their black powder firearms go. I'm not saying they won't bring them back, and all this is just a guess from me. I have no idea what they're going to do. I have no idea. I don't know what I'd like to see them do in the dream world, but unfortunately there are things called profit and loss statements. <laughs> and right now, with the restart going on, I'm pretty sure they're going to be looking to uh, really do well right off the bat. Um Hats off to Mr. Ritz, though. I, I'd love to shake the man's hand. I'm really glad that he's going to bring Thompson Center back to the people. I think that is fantastic, and I can't wait to see what they're going to do. I've never owned any of their Center Fire stuff. Uh, someday I might. I don't know. I've, I've almost got to the point where I've got all the guns I need. I really don't need any more, but that doesn't mean I, I'm not happy with, uh, with seeing a company that, that I like going back into business independently without being under the umbrella of Smith & Wesson and pushed around by political crap. Um, Greg Ritz is a outdoorsman. He's been very active in the hunting and outdoors communities for many years. I think he's probably the perfect person to breathe new life into this. Bring Thompson Center back to the people and bring it back to New Hampshire start making quality, quality firearms right here in New England again. Because you guys got to remember, used to be most of your quality firearms were made in New England. Marlin came from New England, Winchester, you know, all, all Remington. They were all New England companies at one time or another. This is where all your government armories were, were up here in New England for the most part, if you look back at your, your history. So... You know, it tugs at my heartstrings a little bit, especially when I see a company that I love coming back from, let's face it, being abandoned by Smith & Wesson. No surprise there. Love their guns. Don't like their politics. Never have. I know it's their parent company. I know it's not them. I don't care. Smith & Wesson, they make great revolvers. I love them dearly. I've got several of them. But uh, as far as their politics, I don't like it. So it does my heart good to see Thompson standing back on their own without being reined in by corporate America. Hopefully they'll be able to make more of the firearms and, that we know and love. And I'd love to see them get back and start making some of this historical stuff. We can all keep our fingers crossed and hope they do eventually. But we should be thankful for the fact that they saw fit and Greg Ritz had the vision to attempt hopefully succeed to bring thompson center back to the masses we're not usually a gun channel but when something important happens i like to get the news out there and here it's a big deal you know new england it's a big deal to have our gun companies coming back and uh, i'm happy we don't get this kind of thing very often it's good news for a change. It's good news. So take it for what it is. Once again, this is Scott at Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. If you like the video, comment, add in what you want. I'm sure I forgot some stuff. I'm going off memory here. Um, subscribe, like. We're going to do our best to be putting out more videos soon. Get the channel back up and going. And uh, hopefully you stick around with us. And we'll have a good time. Thanks a lot for watching.